Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about how to create a level select screen in Construct 3. Let's get straight to the point. First thing you need to do will be to create the graphics. I have everything ready here. As you know, I use Inkscape to make my assets. So what I'm going to do is to import all the graphics for the level select screen to my Construct 3 project. I prefer to design everything outside mostly in Inkscape. Get a feeling of how the screen is gonna look like and then import every element on its own to Construct. That will be the backgrounds, all the buttons, etc. Once you have your art ready, it's time to create a new layout on Construct 3 to make your level select screen. What I'm doing here is, since I already have my game ready, I'm duplicating one of the existing screens to make the new one. And the reason I do this is because this screen already has all the settings like transitions, size, aspect ratio, etc. So if you are starting from scratch, you will need to create a new layout. But I'm duplicating this one so I don't need to set everything again to work with the rest of the game. So now that I have my new layout, I can delete all of these objects. These are the sprites from the flower shop on my game La Petite Abril. By the way, La Petite Abril is available right now on Bucky and on Android. So if you wanna try it and see the level select screen in action, you can go to Bucky right now and play it for free. I deleted all the sprites I don't need, but kept this one because I'm gonna need a similar sprite to use on the new screen. So to save some time, I'm cloning one of the flower buttons and just replacing the graphics. That way, I can have a similar kind of menu, but this time to select the levels instead of unlocking flowers. So my game has four levels, which means I will need four buttons in this screen. Let me clone this object again and replace the graphics. There you go, now we have all four buttons one for each level, and it's time to place them in the right position on the new screen. So there's probably a better way to do this, but since there are only four levels in my game, I'm just dragging them around and placing them in the right spot. I'm using the middle section of the screen as a starting point, and I start placing the buttons based on that. There you go, now let's do the same for the title of the screen. You could also do this with a text object. Actually, it would be better to do it with a text object. That way, you can then translate the text if your game supports other languages. Since mine is only in English, I can just use a sprite instead. There, now let's just decorate the screen with some of the elements that are already in the game, like a platform and some clouds, and there you go, the screen is ready. Now to the good part, let's code. Again, I'm going to reuse some of the elements I already have in the game to save time. So I'm copy pasting this event group from the flower shop to the new level select screen. This code is all about the touch controls and how you select the levels. So like you can see, I'm keeping four pieces of code, one for each level. And what I want to do is to replace the object, the flower from the previous code, to the new level buttons we created. Since I cloned the buttons, they already have the right variables and the right behaviors. So let me explain this piece of code right here. I have an event that says, when you touch the level 1 button, I want the global variable current level to be set at 1. Also. I want to create a new object called Fade to White on the layer Transition. Basically, what this code does is that every time I touch or click the level 1 button, the game will set the current level to 1 and create the transition effect. This Fade to White object is nothing more than a tile background object that is just a white square that covers the whole screen, and that object has assigned the behavior fade, and it is set to automatic so when the object is created it starts fading 
and once that fading is completed, I want the game to take me to whatever level it is currently selected. So here at the bottom I have another set of events that tells the game to go to the different levels depending on the value of the variable current level. Clear? That's the variable we are setting each time we touch one of the level's objects. This same process is duplicated for each of the four levels, exactly the same. The only difference is that depending on which one you touch, it sets the variable to 1 or 2 or 3 or 4, depending what level you want to open. And that's it, that's basically the level select screen. Let's try it and see if it works. Yep, working. But there are still a couple of things we can do to make it more appealing to users, to make it more dynamic and professional. So let's do that. Oh, before doing that, check this instance variable we have on every button. I added an unlock variable to every button. And what this does is to tell the game if the level is currently accessible, if it is already unlocked. You see here in the code, I have a sub event that checks if that level is currently unlocked. If it isn't, the button won't work. But if it is unlocked, then it will take you to the right level. There. Now let's add a little trick for PC users. So if people are playing on mobile, it doesn't really matter because the levels open immediately when you touch the button, but on PC, on the other hand, players might hover the mouse over the button without clicking on it, and we want to make sure it is clear what level is currently selected. And we do that with a visual response, in this case, making the button bigger when the mouse is hovering over it. Lucky for us, Construct has a built-in condition to detect if the cursor is currently over an object. And if it is, we can change the scale of that object. Make sure you also tell it the scale of the other objects, so you don't end up with all the buttons getting bigger at the same time. What you want to do is to create this nice effect, where buttons get bigger or smaller, depending on the position of the mouse. There we have it. Next thing we are going to do is to add keyboard support. And for that, let's create a new set of events using the built-in keyboard plugin on C3. It's pretty easy actually, I found that I get the best results using sort of a fake cursor. I actually call it like that, a cursor. I create a sprite, any random sprite, this one is a pink square, and I gave it a variable called position. So what it does is that when the cursor, the fake cursor, the pink sprite, is over one of the level buttons, it will set its position variable to the corresponding level. So, if it is over level 1, the variable position will be set to 1, and so on and so on. So, with that in mind, we tell it that when the cursor is in position 1, and we press the right arrow key, we want it to be set to 2, so the cursor moves to level 2 position. This basically is replicating what we can do with the mouse but using the keyboard instead. We add all the conditions we need, so if the cursor is on position 3 and we press right, it goes to position 4. But if we press left, it goes to position 2, like that. And we do the same for all 4 levels, all 4 positions on the screen. See, when we press the button, the fake cursor or our position sprite move through the menu. Perfect. Of course, we will need to make the pink sprite invisible. And we can also replicate the previous event so the buttons get bigger or smaller so players know which one is selected. Pretty perfect. Easy, right? Now we can navigate the menu with mouse, keyboard, and also touch controls. The last step is a bit tricky because it requires the use of arrays. Arrays are kind of an advanced feature in Construct, and what they do is basically save information for you, so you can use them to save what levels are unlocked, what items are unlocked, you can use them for achievements, for inventory system, a bunch of stuff. 
I actually use arrays quite a lot. They are very helpful if you want to make a more professional game. Let me know if you would like a video about arrays. I can go into more details about them and show you how to use them. Let me know in the comments if you would like that video. Anyway, the way I'm using arrays here is to save player progress. So if a player finish level 1 and goes to level 2, I need a way to save that information and make sure the next time that player comes back to the game, the next session, if someone closes the game and returns later, I want to make sure the game remembers that player was already on level 2. He already has access to level 2 from the level select screen. And to do that, I'm using arrays in combination with local storage. So we need an event to check on the start of the layout which level are unlocked and then change the frame of every level object to the right one. Meaning, if the level is still locked, it will show the frame with the gray out lock. And if the level is already unlocked, it will show the picture of the level. That will be checked at the beginning of the layout. And that's it! It is actually super easy to do. Construct 3 actually makes it super easy with the tools it has on our disposal. So to summarize, we created the graphics important to Construct 3, designed the screen to our liking, then made the code for touch controls, keyboard controls, and added a nice visual reference to make the navigation more clear to the player. We then used arrays and local storage to save the progress and to check that progress whenever the player returns to the game. So there you have it guys, I hope that was useful. I used an example from my game La Petite Abril that you can play right now on Pocky and Android, completely free. Thank you so much and let me know if you found this video helpful and what other tutorial you would like. Thank you and I'll see you all in the next one, bye.